another escalation of tensions between the U.S. and China. Trump took actions against China in retaliation for its recent moves on Hong Kong. He authorized sanctions on banks and officials involved in imposing a tough new security law that effectively terminates the semi-autonomous territory's unique status. Today I signed legislation and an executive order to hold China accountable for its oppressive actions against the people of Hong Kong. We've all watched what happened. Not a good situation. Their freedom's been taken away, their rights have been taken away, and with it goes Hong Kong, in my opinion. He made a statement today that I The U.S. move comes two weeks after Beijing passed a new law that many say represses fundamental democratic freedoms in the city. The law prohibits what Beijing views as subversive activities and gives the police sweeping powers to conduct searches and make arrests, something the authorities made ample use of as soon as the law was passed. Trump also revoked Hong Kong's special trading status. Today I also signed an executive order ending U.S. preferential treatment for Hong Kong. Hong Kong will now be treated the same as mainland China, no special privileges, no special economic treatment, and no export of sensitive technologies. Without its privileges, Hong Kong could lose its position as a bustling and competitive financial hub, wiping out businesses and threatening livelihoods. A lot of people will be leaving Hong Kong, I suspect. And we're going to do a lot more business because of it, because we just lost one competitor. As the deep freeze between the two superpowers shows no signs of thawing, Hong Kong's residents are left out in the cold. Let's cross over to Beijing now and our correspondent, Matthias Billinger. Uh, good morning to you. Matthias, how much pressure is this move by Washington putting on the Communist Party in Beijing? Well, first of all, it puts a lot of pressure on the Hong Kong economy. Hong Kong's business model was to be part of the international community and uh, 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 living by international business rules, but being closely aligned to China. Now, Hong Kong will have to redefine its economic position. Um, China seems to see it in the future more like an offshore uh, location for Chinese companies. Chinese capital started to flow into Hong Kong after the national security law, whereas international businesses are cautious. Um, so the Communist Party seems to think that it can manage this transition and uh, keep Hong Kong that way. Um, the sanctions on individuals of the Communist Party, of course, will put pressure on some of them. The U.S., along with other Western countries, have been a major destination for them to send their children to study. Uh, Xi Jinping's own daughter has studied in the U.S., um, so this might anger them, but it will, it will not very likely change their course. Uh, Matthias, Beijing has responded to the move by promising retaliation. What do you think we can expect? Well, what Beijing has done so far in response to another act that is very similar, that also targets individual uh, uh, stakeholders in the Chinese government, the Xinjiang Policy Act, was that they have issued similar sanctions on individual U.S. politicians. Now, this will not harm U.S. politicians in the same way. U.S. politicians do not send their children to study in China. They do not fr travel frequently to China. They also do not bring uh, or, or their funds or their personal uh, assets into China. Um, so this is probably not the most powerful tool that China has. China could, of course, retaliate against uh, American businesses in China. There are mm. various ways to do this, to target them with investigations, to uh, ch change uh, uh, tariffs, etc. Uh, and it might also um, retaliate by um, uh, not fulfilling its obligations from the trade one phase deal so far. However, this is not what we've seen. China has just announced buying more agricultural go goods from the U.S. Okay, that certainly is a good signal, but what, what about the broader context? Where does this move leave U.S.-Chinese relations? Chinese-U.S. relations are at a historical low. They have never 
been as bad as they are now in the past 40 years. Um, and uh, the fact that the two countries may agree on selling some agricultural products, of course, does not speak to their ability to solve the problems between them, because these problems, they're various, they're trade problems uh, that have not been able to be, that they, both sides have not been able to tackle in uh, this uh, in this agreement, for example, talking about uh, high-tech cooperation, etc. There are strategic, geostrategic and military problems. The South China Sea, for example, where China has extended its um, uh, its reach into, into this sea that is bordered by several nations in Southeast Asia and the US and also the International Maritime Court have renounced these claims by China. Um, there has been also uh, quite a harsh statement mm -hmm. uh, just now also from the U.S. foreign ministry that says that China's claims are illegal. Uh, it reaches out to the security of Taiwan, which is uh, de facto independent but claimed by China and where China is also ramping up its threats and it extends to a lot of the international relations of China with other nations um, like India, for example, that is driven closer to the U.S. So there's a vast, vast, vast set of problems uh, that both sides seem not to be able to tackle at the moment. Not at all. Thanks very much for that, Matthias Berlinger, for us today from Beijing.